But right. what if you had? What if you had? What if you had like pitchfork and green grocer and cattle feeder? Then it's like a super action. So here we are now starting the uh, the fourth. Is this the fourth or the fifth time we've done this now? I would lean towards fifth. I think. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, and uh, Sam's question, uh, first question for me this week is, uh, how closely do I believe my original rankings are for uh, to to what I believe in now? Uh, I phrased that terribly, but basically evaluate my previous ratings of of original base set cards because, uh, as you were telling me before we started recording, I. Uh, You've gotten to a pretty cool ELO milestone. Yeah, I just reached 300 the other day. Yep, congratulations. Very cool to hear. And you also have beaten an expert. Uh, you've been able to pull off a big house strategy. So you've now seen some of the extremes in terms of what the game can offer. And you were telling me that you have some stronger opinions on all these cards. I have very strong opinions, but whether they're correct or not is an entirely other matter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, there's definitely some validity to your opinions because, I mean, obviously you're an expert at so many games and, you know, there's a lot of insight to be had there. So did you have any, like, specific order in mind or should we just go through, like, my order? Oh, we can, we can just go down. Okay. Sort by Loom. You can trash talk uh, Chris and Ryan's ranks while they're not here as well. Ah, yeah, great idea. <laughs> great idea. So, uh, so Fraggart, I think, is still one. I think that's... Yeah, well, I can't really comment on it because I've never been able to play with it. Right, right. Uh, it's always but, banned. Yep, uh, rightly so, because, you know, how often do you have each tier of these improvements by the end of the game? You know? Yes, well, very often. Right, and... Even for something as quote unquote unimpressive as seven improvements, Braggart just gives you a super easy action at the end. That's way better than the typical last action. Yeah. Yeah, so it's right rightfully banned. Yeah. Assistant Tiller, I think, is still right to have as the best non banned card in the base set, if we're just considering the base set. Uh, there's so yeah. many dangerous combos with it in the base set. So I'm interested about sort of the ranking difference between Tiller and Seasonal Worker. Okay. So you, you rank Plows that much higher. Than Grain, yes. Because we can look at the possible sources of extra Plows and the possible sources of extra Grain. And there's, in my opinion, a large disparity of, uh, you know, really strong Plow help and really strong grain help or decent grain help that you can, you know, cobble together multiple grain sources that are weaker. But right, you can't because really plow, plows, well. plows, you mainly have tiller and plow driver, right? And then some minor improvements. Right, and moldboard plow, and, you know, yeah. basically three cards in the 96. Whereas, you know, it seems like a third of all cards give you grain somehow. <laughs> Okay, that's it. Yeah, I've seen the day laborer combos be very effective. Yeah. So I'm, I'm fine with Tiller at two. Okay, cool. Childless, I think, deserves to be very high up. I found myself picking it first very, very often. And, you know, if I'm picking it first very often and it helps me win, I think it needs to be top tier. Yeah, I'm. What I'm surprised about is how underrated it is by a lot of other players. Because, like, even the games where I'm trying to not go a childless strat, it comes back to me on on the wheel. <laughs> but yeah, I, I definitely rate childless very high. Yeah, I I could probably try to come up with some kind of explanation as to why you're seeing that happen. But you are playing some pretty decently rated players these days so um it's possible that the people playing base set now weren't playing against all the competition when base set was the only available agricola on bga right. 
And I think if they had a higher volume of games, they might be seeing how strong childless can be. But now there's no, uh, there's no childless specialist in, in the base set player. It's just you. Yeah, I've taken that mantle. Yep. All right. So then now I have to actually be thinking like, how much do I like grocer versus baluster versus house steward, plow driver, sheep walker? So grocer, I've seen the potential. I find it still very hard to balance like the food cost of it. Okay. Because I don't often find myself with surplus food. So how early are you drafting grocer? Uh I don't to be to be honest, in my games I haven't seen it a whole lot. Okay. But if it, like if I did see it, I would draft it because I know how powerful everyone else thinks it is, but Okay. I haven't I haven't really had the chance to exploit it that much. Right. So the, one of the keys to grocer is drafting some extra food for some point in the game. You don't usually need to play grocer early. It's yeah. very effective in the mid and late game. So all the only difference you have to do to your early game is just be a bit more sure that you can get a strong food engine going. That's basically it. And then everything else will fall into place. Yep. Because, I mean, considering Grocer as like a one food cost to play and then eight food to buy everything off of it, uh, nine food is the same as like eating three boars that you have breeding throughout the end game. Yeah, when you put it that way, it doesn't seem like a lot. And you get you get a ton of stuff for it. Right. Yeah. Um, I think it's probably the fourth here. Yeah, I think... I think that's fair. It, I mean, Roof Baluster I like a lot and is hugely helpful in big house games uh, and stone house games, too. So I think it is the challenger to Grocer's fourth spot if I had to still evaluate them. I think Grocer's barely better. Okay. Roof but, Baluster, I have... Because I don't often play Big House, I sort of haven't played Roof Baluster that mm -hmm. much. I can see how trading a couple of food for a lot of stone is very effective, though. Right. So the particular best case for Roof Baluster is when there's renovation pressure across the table from everyone, and you appear to the table to be behind on your renovation parts to stone. Right, and then you just go bang and go. Right, it's a huge tactical swing as well as just having a lot of value from the stone. Yeah. Um, yeah. House Steward, I think I would rate lower now. I think uh, I was too high on it. This is the first one I'll, I'll say I might have gotten wrong by a bit. Uh, yeah. I, I think I haven't seen it, you know win enough and the the point of having the best cards is to win with them so if they're not helping you win then they're not as good the three points is obviously good but if you have to go to like six houses to get it i'm not sure that's worth it right and you know we have in the notes here that if you're playing it you better be aiming for five or more rooms yeah uh but with the amount of combos to reduce room costs of differing, you know, wood and clay rooms, you can both find combos to build them pretty cheap with the right yep. cards. So it does get pretty unpredictable, you know, who ends up, you know, building a sixth and seventh room because they have the resources to, and why not? Surely not a seventh. Oh, I've seen seven. Surely not. <laughs> You'd have to get, like, brushwood collector and uh parlor right well i mean imagine a day labor combo without the tiller okay like you have cottager and loam pit right and okay, a seasonal yeah. worker you know and a brushwood you know what are you gonna do why not build the sixth and seventh room take up some empty space sure i guess yeah <clears throat> plow driver okay 
probably would be the thing I would push above House Steward. I think uh, Chris and Ryan have this right compared to me again. Yeah, so like, as you were saying, plow assists aren't very plentiful. Mm -hmm. And it's just a very strong card that combos with a lot of stone room occupations. Right, it is is the premier stone house occupation in the set. Yep. Yeah, so I'm fine having it ranked high. Let's see. So Sheepwalker, I also took some flack for for putting it as high as 8. Pretty much everyone gives me flack for this rating. That's that's a bit rough. Like, the others have put it 10 and 11. That's not that different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, I yeah. saw Sheepwalker do a lot of damage um, before Agricola came to BGA. And I saw it do considerably less damage on BGA than I expected. Yeah. So while I would like to rate it lower, I don't actually know what I would put above it. We're now into the tier of, you know, this is decent in a lot of ways, but... Well, I definitely have Seasonal Worker above it for the combo. Okay, that's fair. Um, that's definitely the entire reason Seasonal Worker is a single-digit rating here, because... Yeah, on only own, because of the combo. Yeah. yeah, on its own it doesn't do much at all, but in the combo, the day labor combo in the base set, it's just ridiculously good. Yep. So, you could definitely argue that, you know, if you find the combo potential super important, then yeah, rate Seasonal Worker higher, and if you don't find it as important, rate it lower. Yeah, it's just one I would draft anyway to keep away from other players, too. Right, yeah. Conjurer, I think, is too high. Yeah, I, from I think my place. It's probably not 10th. I haven't seen Conjurer played a, a whole lot. Right. That's well, the... Traveling plays is just such a bad spot. <laughs> yeah, but I think Conjurer might not have had, you know, enough people playing it just to to see how good it could be. Well, I think it definitely has potential. Like, you get a wood and a grain. Like, it sounds amazing. Mm hmm Yep. But, yeah, the lack of traveling players' combos is a big problem. Uh, in yeah. original Agricola, there were a lot of traveling players' combos. So stacking something like Conjurer on top of other traveling players would be really cool. But yeah, those combos were really reduced in the revised edition for reasons unknown to me. Scholar, I don't know if I, this feels a little high, but also I don't know if I would rate Stonecutter really? Tutor higher than it. Yeah, because I mean, Stone House is just like a very specific game plan, right? Do we have a connection issue? Yeah, I think uh, Sam might have dropped off. Are you there? Hello? Hey. Sorry about that. That was um, that was my cat stepping on my power button. <laughs> that sounds unfortunate. Do you He's need more time to? Very annoying sometimes. No, no, no. I'm I'm back. I'm fine. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so scholar, I I would honestly rate higher. I really like scholar. Okay, I think Stonehouse. I mean, is you know not frequent enough of a game plan to deserve too high of a rating here. It's possible I renovate to stone in like every game far too quickly, but I find myself getting great use out of Scholar. Yes, if you have Scholar, then, you know, no reason not to renovate to stone. And I mean, Plow Driver is definitely stronger than Scholar, but, you know, yes. Plow Tightness makes it worth the rating we gave it. Yeah... Again, I, th I think it's now really hard to say 
uh, you know, what's better than what, because these are all... They're all roughly the same, right? Yeah. Stonecutter, probably not as good as this. You know, I just don't see it quite as often as I initially expected. I expected a lot of people to play Stonecutter Lumber Mill combos. Yeah. And, you know, I don't see that as much as I expected. I've found it uh, just... I don't know the right time to play it is a thing. Yeah, it's not super clear. Ideally, you have a minor improvement or two that also needs it, or could be helped by it. And, you know, you want to be building a couple major improvements and renovating to stone. You want to have a vague idea how to get three or four stone or more out of it. But honestly, I see stone not as contested as it should be in my games. Like, there will be games where there's like four stone on the board and no one wants it. Right, yeah. But that that's probably just a low, a low ELO thing. It might be, but I mean, that happens... That's part of the thing of why I think Stonecutter might be worse than this is the, the game just ends up with too many resources for the for the extra drips of stone to be worthwhile. Yeah. Tudor, I think, has a lot of potential. It might... Or it's probably better than Stonecutter in my eyes now. So Tudor, I had, a, I had a really rough game thinking I was a genius playing Tudor as the first occupation. Mm, yeah, I mean, and there's... It... <laughs> there's also the thing, too. I'm actually not super sure I just said something accurate for just the base cards. My memory of that arena season or those arena seasons are a little foggy now regarding Tudor. But the I think... next set of cards we got, the, I guess, second starter set, you could say, has a lot of occupation support. Okay. I guess I guess with Scholar... So I, I have played it once with Scholar for a few extra points. That was quite nice. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I wouldn't recommend playing it first card. Fair. Very fair. Firewood Collector is probably decent. You know, I like this rating. I think being high on it relative to my peers is a good thing. Uh, one of the coolest things it does is it incentivizes you to plow. Okay, I guess if you don't have the plow support, then yeah, the extra wood is nice. Yeah. If you have a bunch of crops and no other plow support, then this will help you with your fence pieces too. Or, okay. or I, I, th I think it's fair. I think it's fair around that rating. Yeah. Ryan really doesn't like it, though. Or may maybe uh, he's changed his first. mind. He's probably come around to it somewhat. Okay. Conserv Conservator, I, I, I agree with you on this rank. I think it's super strong. Yeah, the, the amount of combos it works with in this set is something I think my friends missed here. Because the ratio of stone house occupations are pretty high here uh it's a great combo with roof baluster you know a two card super surprise to get your wood yeah. house to stone so things like that just it just seems to have more utility than you might expect in this specific set but it's basically a card that saves you what three or four brick and a reed yes that's all right Yes. Uh, it skips the perfect amount of clay and reed, and you are missing out on the improvement on your renovation from wood to clay, also. Yes. Master Bricklayer, I was definitely too high on. I think we're all too high on it here. It's just so hard to, to really uh, use, because you're, at least at the tables we were at, uh, the, the major improvements, you know, just got bought up very quickly. Yeah, and it'd be hard. You'd still get a decent stone discount on, what, even if you bought two of them? That's right. still decent. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, there's still the odd game where it really goes crazy for someone. Yeah. But, you know, you could argue that those players could have won the game 
not playing Master Bricklayer and doing farming things instead with their yeah, action probably. advantage. Yeah. So yeah, too high. Priest. You know, it's strong it, in the right combos. Is it rated that high because of Caravan? I think we didn't account for Caravan in any of these ratings. Okay, it's assumed it would be banned. Right. I think this rating for Priest is okay, but probably for different reasons. Um, I think it's less generically good and more combo-y good. Uh, and I guess in this set, the only combo is Cottager. Right, for the early renovation. Right. Or if you're behind on building the first room and renovation flips in round five. Yeah. I think this rating's fine. It really does do a lot when you can play it reasonably. Aiming to play it on its own with no support is not the way, though. Yeah, so obviously you'd, you'd need, like, a good reason to not build a room, and Priest is probably not a good enough reason by itself. Right. Yep. Small-scale Farmer looks fine to me. Maybe it should be a little higher. Uh, you know, let me say this should be higher. I think even using this for four wood early makes it, you know, quite fine. Someone else is on this spreadsheet. Yeah, I mean, this is just public on the, on the video. Hmm. If, which is, uh... I mean, I still get plenty of views on the base set video, which is kind of surprising to me, because it's been like a whole year since Agricola's been on BGA, and there's so many more cards now, but there's still apparently a consistent group of people still learning the base set cards, which is really cool. But Yeah, it's a very helpful video. I'm glad. So it if I, if I were to go out and, like, buy Agricola from a board game shop right now, what cards would I get with it? You would get the uh, the base set cards. If you're so I'd get these, these 96. Yes, including okay. Braggart and Caravan. And Big nice. Country, yeah. You can throw a Caravan straight into a fire, or, you know, frame it on your wall, because you'll never need it for the actual game. Oh, I think I'd use it against my family a few times and then get bored. <laughs> That's a great way to get people to like Agricola, is just use Caravan against them. <laughs> so, small-scale farmer. I think I did play it in one of my first games. But then I was like, I don't really want to build a room. I want to keep getting extra wood, and that's not how you're supposed to play with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, there's an occupation in the next set of cards called Wood Collector. And it gives you a wood on the next five rounds. And it ends up being quite a good card. So yeah, so this is similar. Using Small Scale Farmer as, you know, four-fifths of a Wood Collector from round one, I think is super reasonable. Or even longer if people fight for build rooms ahead of you. Yep. So just because of playability in that instance, I think it probably deserves higher than 18, because we see all these cards above it that are just so inflexible in how to use them well. Uh, Carpenter might be too high here. It's... Really? I don't like it as a, a woodroom helper. I think it basically has to be, like, a combo with something like Frame Builder for really cheap clay rooms. Okay, but what's what's the difference between, like, I play small-scale farmer for, for four wood, or I play carpenter for four discount, for, for, for four wood discount on rooms? The timing of the wood. So, small-scale farmer, you're getting that four wood before you build your first room. Carpenter, okay. you're not. You're getting two of them for your first room, and two of them and for your two. second room. And, you know, maybe two more for a third room. But getting all that read isn't always easy. And 
if you end okay, up that's playing, fair. yeah, and if you end up playing Carpenter for two wood, which can happen on accident, you know that's pretty sad. It also encourages you to do the bad thing of trying to build multiple rooms at once when it's more tactically effective to yeah build one at a time right. Okay, and that's probably something a lot of beginning players miss. Actually, do you want to, or do you think you have any insight onto? You know, more things I to see, think about for double builds and stuff like that. Well, oh, I see Carpenter played quite a bit. And yeah, I see a lot of double rooms being built, but much, much too late in the game. Right. So we agree that sometimes it's way better to just build one room at a time. And that I think sounds very counterintuitive, especially to beginners. So. Do you have I, I think it sounds reasonable because you want you really want your first room out there to get the first family growth. And if you're saving up for two rooms, it's going to be too late by the time you build them. Okay, so I guess your perspective is just really hammer that heuristic of uh, that third family member is so critical that you can't delay it by building an extra room. Yeah, I, I think that's reasonable. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I do think this rating's too high, uh, just because the downside of Carpenter is significant, and the Carpenter upside is really attained with combos, not by itself. Yeah. Harpooner. I, I wonder if you'd rate this higher, because I see this, like, every game. Yeah, that doesn't make it good. As As we noted with Geologist, we see it a lot. But like, I saw the 500 ELO player I beat played Harpooner, had a fishing combo from memory. How was their wood situation in the late game? I have no idea. Okay. I, I only keep track of my own board lumen. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I don't remember much anymore about how good Harpooner was in base set only, but... I want to say there was a lot of counterplay towards it. Uh, lots of people were willing to fish block for someone who needed right, Harpooner right. for a critical fishing action. So based on that counterplay, one of the supposed benefits of Harpooner is that, you know, not too many people are going to compete for two food fishing, but... In practice, it turned out people were going to compete for the two food fishing because it's like two food and give four beggars to my opponent. Yeah. So when you put it like that, yeah. Uh, I don't necessarily support doing that uh, unless they're like clearly your only main competition at that point. Uh, but uh, that's what I think I saw, if I remember correctly. So. You know, that definitely so, means it's rated too high here. From my games, there's very little fish fishing blocking going on. Okay. And people always, always, always build it with canoe. <laughs> because they hate wood. <laughs> it's because they're like, fishing, fishing, go. Yeah, I don't need wood. It's fine. Scythe worker... I think I still like more than I should. I have never found the right time to play this card. Right. It's definitely something that gives you big grain multiplication. Um, so, you know, if you're going to bake with a cooking hearth, Scythe Worker is certainly something that can help you do that. Um... It's also fun to use if you are late on sowing your crops the first time. Uh, because yeah, yeah. you can sow your grain in stage four and get it off for the last harvest. I am often very late in sowing my crops. Okay, but if you're only a bit late, then Scythe Worker could be a great mid-game move for you. Yep. So, I think it's probably fairly rated. It might be to a me. little too high. Because, like, it looks good to me, too, but I also know that I'm probably too high on this card in general. Just from, you know, a lot of people in my Twitch chat who I respect as strong players are 
always like, you, do you really need that when I draft it? It's all right to have haters. <laughs> True. Uh, Brushwood Collector, I think I'm too low on here. I think uh, it's a good enough combo piece in a lot of ways. Uh, yeah, I've, I've managed to make use of it. Especially when House Steward gets played, you can find that those weirdo playroom discount combinations and those can pay off big, I think. I would play, probably rate it a bit higher as well. Yeah. Adoptive parents. Very hard to rate, I think. But I recall not playing it much. And that's basically still true with all the new cards. I'm not playing it much. So I probably have it rated a bit too highly here. It's, well, it's like a card that you can play in any game because you are going to grow. And it's like, it's trading a couple of food for an, for an extra action, really. Yeah, but or that er helpful. not having that earlier mid-game food can really cause problems down the line, though. Yeah, true. Because in some situation, it, it might kill off your animal breeding. It might, you know, destroy, destroy your sowing tempo or something like that, so... I think it's like it's like a safe draft where you you might be able to use it in any game. Mm -hmm. That's certainly true, and it, yeah, if you're struggling to to find a good pick, yeah. Animal dealer. Uh, pretty underwhelming to me. Yeah, I think it's probably too high for me. Chris and Ryan have kind of low ratings, though. The obvious, the obvious benefit is you get a breeding pair. Yeah. I mean, in the notes, we do address that, I guess, so... Yeah. And it's possible I was thinking that bigger family was happening so often. Probably overestimating how many times you're going to end up on a big family. Store housekeeper I'm interested in. <laughs> because there's like there's like a super difference in rankings here. Yeah, I mean those guys are nuts. I mean, Storehouse Keeper might be a little low here, but there are so many ways to get grain. Why are you relying on resource market? I mean it's against, like, it's against turning really a good strong action. against really strong players, it's just like giving them more excuses to take resource market. Like you don't want your opponents to take resource market on you. I guess, but like people are going to take it anyway. It's just turning a strong action into an even stronger one. Yes, it's certainly that. Uh, and I mean, if that's your view on it, that's totally fair. Um, yeah, just in my Agricola experience, it's never seemed amazing. Maybe I don't give it enough credit, but I think in this set, you know, why do you need this way to get grain? Use some other way to get green, and you're almost as good. Like, but think about the handy clay you can get. You can get from it. Ah, yes. Next card. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Head. Hmm. I think this is an okay rating for me. Middle of the pack. I guess it depends how many times you're building fences, and if it's once. It's basically a three wood card. Right, and that's not particularly good unless your best action would be two wood. Um, but uh, big families obviously can use Hedgekeeper well. Yeah, I think it has its uses. Yeah, like in a game where nobody's... Where, so let's say everyone's building at least one wood room and you build a second or third wood room. Then I... Or you're running Harpooner and want to throw away all your wood. Yeah. Hedgekeeper can give it back. I don't mind as, as another sort of flexible card that you can play. Right. I, in most cards. I think drafting it like adoptive parents might be good too. Like, there's, it's yeah. always possible that playing Hedgekeeper will be your best action at some point. Yep. Clay Hut Builder I probably have underrated. Uh, there are enough good reasons to search for Clay House support. So. 
Yeah, and if you have like rammed clay, it's exactly basically all, all your fencing. And if you have hard porcelain, then this is stone delivery guy. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I like him. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, this specific set play up builder is pretty good. You know, probably closer to Ryan's number fifteen there. A manservant. Yeah, I think this is fine. Like, it's never something you... You never renovate to stone for the express purpose of playing manservant or groom, right? Well, maybe you don't, but I absolutely would. <laughs> <laughs> That's a better food, I, I, Sam. I really like him. Okay. But I, I like the stone house combos in general, so I probably rate groom a lot higher as well. Interesting. Okay. Have you played these without Scholar or Plow Driver behind them? Or are you just uh, saying you play? I've played them with Scholar. Okay. I think I think very early on I played like Manservant Plow Driver without Scholar. But ah, with Scholar it just yeah. Scholar and Groom is a great combo. I'm not gonna debate like playing Manservant or Groom with Scholar or with yeah, Plow yeah. Driver. But what about on their By own? themselves, maybe underwhelming, yes. I mean, it's like, you, you can't go to stone early just for manservant or just for groom. It's just not strong enough. You're losing out looks, on so many things you could be doing. You look so happy on the card, though. How can you not pick him? <laughs> In the original edition, uh, my friend Shadow has a, has a trick for knowing which cards are good. It doesn't work in Revised anymore with the art. But his trick is, if... The picture has a guy with his arms out. It's a good card. <laughs> like Braggart? Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. But don't do that for a revised edition art. The art changed. Um, I skipped Cottager here. Do you, do you feel you're a bit low on Cottager just because of the combo? Probably a little low. Uh, it is necessary for a lot of like the odd combos like the super powered rooms uh like super powered clay rooms or mantelpiece or priest you need cottager in this set so but even just with the day labor things it's it's like a strong addition mm, i combo. i think you really need a purpose for early renovations or builds that are somehow more convenient that way okay so if you had like tiller and seasonal worker oh then absolutely take cottager and you know yeah don't spend an action building your room but you know this is kind of like draft and pray you get something useful or you're never playing it yeah i'll, I'll agree with that yeah so you could argue for it to be higher just because its utility can be really insane. So, uh, And then Groom, I don't think we need to talk too much about. I think it's fine here. Okay. Uh, organic Farmer, we are all way too low on it. Yeah, I've, I've used this in one of the games with uh, Crook and Manger. Oh yeah, and even just for two points. You know, there's nothing wrong with a two-point last action. Yeah. No, the, I'm, I'm a fan of it. The ability to just get, you know, a couple points with your last action of the game is definitely valuable. And uh, that's in our notes, but we just all undervalued that ability. That ends up being, you know, quite good. This is probably like teens, somewhere around here, probably. Yeah, I could. Yeah, I could definitely see it above a lot of those cards. Not that it's not that it's picked early too often. Like I see it late in the draft a lot. Yes, yes. But uh, at the beginning of the arena seasons, I think I was picking it. You know, sixth and seventh. But I would. I found myself regularly picking it fourth, and sometimes even third. Yeah, it's decent. I'm interested in actually the tier you have next to the cards because you have tier uh, the groom is uh, tier D. So what I did for the tiers is I just put everything in 
our ECR order. I sorted by. Oh right, ECR this is oh, okay. Yeah, this ranking by your by your order. Right, right. Okay. So like somewhere between at thirty two point six, I decided organics good enough for C and groom's good enough for D. So this was just uh. <laughs> Poor groom. <laughs> You're never playing groom on its own. Mushroom Collector I see in nearly every game. Right. People like the drips of early food. It makes you feel early in the game that you have food forever. And then you don't. And then you're like, why don't I have any food? Why is my feeding so bad? And why don't I have wood as well? Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All bad things started by the Mushroom Collector. So, you could argue that 32 is too high. Maybe it should be a little lower. I, you should put it in the 40s just so people don't pick it and play it. Isn't having it in the 30s enough of a statement? Well, apparently not. I mean, Woodcutter should be a statement, right? Woodcutter I see in nearly every game too. Right, and people are like first picking it, first action playing it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, congratulations. But uh, in in the base set of Revised, there's, you know, it, it's really not a good card. It's okay sometimes, but not It's every not going to get you too much, too much extra wood. Yeah, and the timing of it, kind of like Carpenter. It's not quite enough, uh, early enough, to be that great. So, I think 33 out of 48 is a good place for it. Animal Tamer, I definitely have too low. Um, I've gotten a lot higher on capacity cards in the last few months to a year. It's, it's like surprisingly useful. Or well, maybe not surprisingly, but it's very useful. Yeah, I mean, just I see in maybe somewhere between a third and half of all my games, someone uh, plays a card like Animal Tamer. Uh, the expansions have a lot of similar cards to Animal Tamer. Uh, someone plays one of those, takes some sheep with a fireplace in stage one, isn't breeding and is breeding sheep in the first harvest. Like, yeah, scary. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool that way. And Animal Tamer gives you a grain also. So, nothing. Where wrong. would you rate it then? About the twenties. Maybe even higher than that. Probably, yes. Priestish, small scale, yeah, somewhere in here probably. That's uh, fair. Yeah, I mean, I guess I should say thank you for making me go over these because uh, before starting recording, I was like, ah, no, all of these ratings are fine; they're all pretty close. And and now we're seeing a couple that just aren't organic and animal tamer. So, yeah. Green growth though. I, if you don't have like any grain or vegetable help. I think green gross is quite, quite nice. Really? But I, I know, so I know like the opinion is grain seeds is not a good action to be taking, mm -hmm. but I, I've, I've managed to use it in a game or two. Okay. Uh, when are I'm you... I'm hearing some doubt in your well, voice. I mean, there are specific situations where it's fine and maybe you've just found yourself in that situation more often than I So expected. there was... There was one game, I, I don't remember if it was the big house game or not, but I just had no vegetables, no crop, uh, no I, grain. I would play so Greengrocer in a big house game. I, I would be fine playing Greengrocer after I grow to four or five. Yeah, so I played it late and just collected grain a couple of times, uh, so and before the end of the game, so and that was nearly all points. Yeah. No, that's the ideal way to use Greengrocer. That, that's, that's wonderful. Um... The other situation I would play Greengrocer is off of Scholar. Yeah. Like Scholar, Plow that. Driver, Greengrocer. That's totally fine too. But, you know, that's... You know, when else are you going to use this? Yeah, you know, I've seen some people use it in the early game just to be like, oh, I have a vegetable now. Right. And obviously that doesn't do anything. No. Unless you get a cooking hearth, and then congratulations, green grocer is your pitchfork. So, yeah, early veggies just don't do do enough. 
we'll get to Pitchfork, but I did have a good game with Pitchfork. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. You're one of them. Pitchfork stands. I wouldn't say stand, but it was it was a funny game. Stable, Stable architect. I think it's good at 36. There... I don't think I'd, I'd ever play it. I mean, you hope you never play it. And then there are just a couple accidents that happen, and next thing you know, you're playing Stable Architect. I guess you can probably say the same about a lot of these cards coming up, just like you wouldn't play them very often. No, that's not true. No. Like, there's the I wouldn't play them very often, oops, I messed up. And then there's I would just never play them at all because they're that bad. <laughs> okay, fair. Yeah. Uh, so I like where Stable Architect is. Because, uh, you know, in an ideal world, Ryan's ranking is more correct. But in practice, you just have enough games where you screw up your wood supply and have to build stables at the end game. Oh, I can see that. Yeah, especially on big houses. Uh, frame Builder, I think, is fine. It's a combo piece sometimes and nothing better. Yep. Don't have I, much to say on it. Yeah. Pastor, I think, you know, could be too high, arguably. Oh, yeah, somebody pointed this out that I had 238s I never fixed. That's fun. Um, yeah, Pastor might be too high. It's just like, if you're in a rat race to not build a room, you're probably not winning. Unless you have Caravan. Right, Caravan or Big Country. It's like the only times. You'd use faster, so especially with Big Country Band, which wasn't the case when I made this list. We made this list. Yeah. Yeah. Big Breeder, I'm kind of surprised it's, it's that low. Should probably be a little higher. Should be playable in a decent variety of games. Like, anytime you have a Cooking Hearth, one pig in capacity in round 12, it's two pigs worth. Um, it's yep. a two point action if you don't have any pigs at the end game yeah no it, it's better than 38 yeah I've, I've found myself drafting it just as the last or second last card and playing it a surprising amount of games yeah, yeah. geologist too high this needs to be like <laughs> no I'm serious about it because yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know you don't like it well I mean if you just think about the win percentage, the, the percent of winning boards that have Geologist on them is ridiculously low. Like, the rate of winning on average is, like, 25%, barely higher than 25% of because of tiebreakers, right? So you have Do you have statistics for the cards, or is this just from, like, an anecdotal experience? Uh... Statistics first, and then anecdotally, I, you know, check how reasonable these look in practice, and indeed they were but, this ugly, so... Okay, um, you, do, you do have stats? Yeah, so in the Agricola forums... Oh, nice. Uh, I briefly had access to the BGA database, and I'm still slowly working on trying to get access to it again. They, they shut me down. But <laughs> if we look at... You know, arena games with card tracking. Oh, wow. Uh, PWR is the main stat, and it basically says... Uh, Percentage one, win rate? Uh, no, it, it's an abbreviation for power. But oh, okay. Power is basically the percent of winning farms the card ends up on, scaled to a specific... Or, yeah, scaled to a 500-card deck. To, or standardized to a 500 card set so that you know okay. power can be compared across set sizes um, they all seem pretty reasonable oh wall builder right down the bottom I mean yeah these are all terrible in the base game but uh, if we look at uh, where are the headers here yeah it's pretty low so Oh, plays and wins given play are the third to last and last. Geologist 
won 19 out of 159. That's one out of eight. Be underwhelming. I mean, if your base win percent is one out of four, you play this card and now your chance of winning is a one out of eight. That's pretty bad. Yeah. That's pretty bad. Oh, look at how low Mushroom Collector is. Yeah, 15 out of 106 is like one out of every seven. Yes. Uh, Oven Firing Boy is 13 out of 40. Cattle Feeder is one out of every ten. Stable Architect is one out of every five and a half. So this is a stat combination I really like looking at is how does your, like, what's the winning rate when it gets played? Because if it's significantly lower than one out of four, you should really think about what that card is helping you with. Yeah, I mean, if it's lower than one out of four, it's just, it's not very good, is it? Yeah, I mean, you could argue that people misplay certain cards in certain ways, and your expected win percent isn't going to match the overall population, but... I mean, if we... And maybe, at... maybe, maybe they just came up against a stronger card, like a caravan or, or big country or something. <laughs> maybe. Uh, but, you know, something like Groom. Not very high rated because it's hard to actually play it when you draft it. That's another part of the calculation here. But, you know, if it's winning 35 out of 106, that's one out of every three times it gets played. That means it's very playable in certain situations, but the situation is rare. Yeah. That's like a good kind of card to have in the game. Whereas, you know, Geologist, you don't want to be one out of eight. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cattle feeder one out of ten. I don't. I don't think it <laughs> needs any more defense. Uh, Only good uh, cow prince or something. Hey, even then, just just get cows in better ways. <laughs> you don't need to waste an action, and then waste more actions by going to grain seeds. Uh, right? what, if you had, what if you had? What if you had like pitchfork and green grocer and cattle feeder? Then it's like a super action. Did you have to spend actions playing Pitchfork and Greengrocer and Cattle Feeder? Well, yeah, because they or all did, said or Grain did they, Seed. Well, <laughs> 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 Look, Sam, if, if all of these cards like wind up being played and you didn't have to spend actions doing it, I'm all for it. <laughs> well, okay. Sheep Whisperer? Sheep Whisperer... I think it's fine where it is. Compared to Geologist and Cattle Feeder, I would put lower, just because they just kill your winning chances. Sheep Whisperer, I still have hope that, you know, maybe playing it in the mid-game is the best option. Spending early actions on Sheep Whisperer, not very good. It's sort of awkward with the timing of when the sheep come in. Yeah, but, you know, there's some truth to, like, if you play this in round 8, you'll get a sheep in 10 and 13, and then they'll breed twice. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. Yeah, and I think that might be the key to not killing your game by playing Sheep Whisperer, because you can definitely kill your game by playing this too early. Yeah. I think the rating's fine, though. Uh, Lutonist, just very underwhelming effect. Um, probably should be a little higher just to replace Cattle Feeder and Geologist. Would you consider playing it if someone plays, like, a Conjurer early? Yes, yes. It's, it's fine to follow up someone else's Conjurer with a Lutonist. That's totally fine. But, yeah, uh, so I get it's just a matter of traveling players isn't going to be visited that often, so you're not going to get that much benefit from it. Right, and then if you play this, people are going to want it even less. Yeah. Consultant is too low here. There's yeah, I, I consider it like the same as Peak Breeder, just like a good last action all. Very good point. Yeah. Yeah. It, it should be rated pretty close to Peak Breeder. You're definitely right. Paper Maker, um, with more sets, there's more occupation support, and I like Paper Maker more. 
Uh, it did take me some time to be convinced of that, even that. Um, but yeah, in base set with, you know, it's very questionable how many occupations you're playing anyway. It's very hard to justify Paper Maker, I think. Yeah, I'm not, not a fan of it. But uh, even so, you know, it's not the absolute worst card, so. Yep. Uh, Roughcaster, fine where it is. You know, play with Cottager and Lone Pit only. I think that's correct. Wall Builder, I think, is exactly the same situation. Play with Cottager and Lone Pit only. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, except yeah, fail. I think the effect is worse. Like, you get one more overall food, but the food comes slower, and if you build the clay room really late, well, then you're maybe not even getting all three food that Roughcaster would give you. So. Yep. Yeah, okay, cool. And up, or Oven Firing Boy. Yeah, if you're playing this in base set, then something went really wrong. This is uh, Lose a Little Less Badly card. The only times I remember playing Oven Firing Boy in the base set arena season is when I was in so much trouble and needed to be losing in a nicer way. So in the base set is bad, but I rem uh, from your stream game you used it with all oh, the cards. Oh, yeah, with hand truck? Oh, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that looks like a really fun combo. That, that is a super fun combo, absolutely. I mean, the existence of that combo is kind of why I love Hand Truck so much. It, if you pass me Hand Truck, I have a very hard time saying no. It's funny, like, I'm going to get two wood and, oh, 11 food. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Good times for Seems sure. like a good action. Yep, <laughs> approve. All right. That was a good exercise. Uh, shall we go to the miners? Yeah, sure.